Okay, I have a confession. I really struggle with simplifying. Do you struggle with that too? Oh my goodness, why is it so hard? <laughs> especially when you're trying to paint from life or in nature or from your photos, honestly, all the time. <laughs> it's hard all the time. So I'm gonna show you some failed paintings and I want to explain why they're bad. And then we're gonna get into some solutions for how to simplify and how to make your paintings stronger and better. By the way, my name is Emily and here on my channel, we do art tutorials, product reviews, and we discuss all things watercolor. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button right now. Okay, these paintings have never seen the light of day. I finished them and I stuffed them in a drawer because I just didn't like them. So let me show you this one first. And you might be thinking, oh, that's not too bad. What's the problem here? Honestly, the problem is this painting has so many things that compete with each other that there's no real focal point. And I did want to make the painting about something. It is important to make your painting about something. For me, it was about the light streaming through the trees, which I think I was able to accomplish. However, I used so many different colors, pretty much all the colors on my palette, and all of my shadow shapes are are largely disconnected. My light shapes are also disconnected. There's just not a flow through the painting. So that's why I considered this one not my best work. This was from Life, painted at the Denver Botanical Gardens, by the way. I still had a great time. I'm still glad I did it. Here's another example of just trying to do too much all at once and not really creating a very good flow between the elements in the painting. I really struggled with figuring out what this painting was going to be about because I loved everything in front of me and I didn't know what to focus on. And you can really tell there's a lot of confusion here. Is it about the sky? Is it about the mountains? Is it about these trees? Is it about the shadow and light on the snow? Who knows? I made it about all of it. So this painting is just very confused. Here's an example of a plein air painting where I simply ran out of time. <laughs> I was working from life at the Broadmoor Hotel, which is a gorgeous place in Colorado Springs. If you've never visited, well worth the visit. I started out with lots and lots of detail in this little portion of the hotel back here. And I really wanted to capture, this is my friend Kathleen Hudson, painting in the foreground but as the day progressed I got caught up in conversation she moved and was talking to other people I ran out of time and this painting ended up looking very disjointed and discombobulated there are some things I could have done better like perhaps maybe doing a thumbnail sketch ahead of time and deciding on my overall composition and the flow of shapes and shadows and lights but overall it ended up being about the building instead of about the figure which was backwards from what my initial vision was so that one didn't work. Let me show you some examples of better or more successful plein air paintings. This one was from Cannon Beach, painted on location, and it's just got the power of simplicity. We simplified it down to one major shape one major dark shape that is, and all the elements around it are supporting that shape. And if you compare that to this one, I mean, what a difference. This is strong, this is weak, and it's all because of the simplicity in this powerful painting. Here's another example of one that I actually did a thumbnail sketch ahead of time and just planned ahead for my lights and darks. I also changed things from what I was seeing in front of me. I didn't necessarily see all of these snow connections, but I decided to exaggerate those a little bit, and I certainly designed designed my composition based on the flow of these darks rather than just painting what I see. Here's another example of a stronger design, one that I did a thumbnail sketch of ahead of time. And I actually started with a different cropping of this waterfall and modified it and made it more of a square because I liked the shapes better. It's all about establishing light and dark shapes and a flow and connection between them. And we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of that later in this video. And hopefully these tips will help you with your paintings to create more powerful and successful paintings. One of the keys to successfully simplifying is planning ahead. So we're going to talk a lot about how to establish major shapes. To show you some more examples of that, I pulled up some photos in front of me and I want to talk a little bit about how to find those major shapes, how to simplify in your head ahead of time before you just jump in with paint. So if we take a look at this first one, this is my precious little son hanging out at the lake. And if you look at this image, you can see there are three major shapes. You've got the sky shape right here and the foreground shape which is, happens to be a different value than the shape of the figure. And then of course you've got my little man right here. 
So three major shapes. If you simplify it down just to those three elements, that will save you so much pressure to try to include all of these details. And I wanna say right off the bat, I would definitely not include the other swimmer in the water. You can take things out of a picture. That is okay. In fact, that's probably the best thing for your composition. Here's another example of something that could be really complicated when you're looking at it, you're like, oh my goodness, look at all those shapes. But if you squint at it, there are really just three major shapes. You've got the shape of the sky, and I'll include the background in that shape too, because that's all kind of the same thing. And then your major focal point is this shadow shape of the rocks right here. You can see how that's just, if you connect it all together, that's one shape. And then you've got this big lit up shape of the rocks in the foreground. So three major shapes. And also as it stands, three major values. You've got a midtone in the sky, a shadow in the rocks, and a light in the foreground. Now with flowers and things where you have so much detail in the photo, I definitely encourage you to simplify by cutting some elements out and adjusting your cropping so that you can really hone in on your focal point. Obviously we want the focal point to be this giant bloom right here, but there are a number of ways you could crop it to make it a stronger composition. You could decide to make it a square, something like that, and take out this flower back here. You could make it a rectangle shape. You could also just decide to leave out some of these background flowers, like this one, for example, feels like it's competing with this one. This one, I think, is a really nice complement to it, and I love the shape of this leaf here. Just remember, though, that you can change those shapes. You can change the placement of the leaves. You can change the placement of the flowers, move them around to fit a more pleasing design. This this one could be incredibly tricky. When you're glancing at this, you're like, whoa, look at all those details. Now, I mean, if you look at my wall back here, you guys know I love painting details, right? But it's not always the best thing. If you take this photograph and desaturate it and pump up the contrast, let me show you. This is what you can see. And sure enough, we can still simplify it down to three basic shapes. We've got the sky at the top. We've got the dark shape which is the mountains and the reflection on the water. So this whole center shape can be grouped together. And then you've got another light shape in the foreground. So three basic shapes. Didn't realize you could simplify it that much, right? You don't have to paint all those lily pads. You don't have to paint all of those branches in the foreground. Of course, I would encourage you to add some of those in to capture the character of it, but just narrowing down your focus to those three shapes and making sure you don't lose that essential feel of the painting will help you simplify the whole thing. Here's an example of some competing shapes in the photograph. This thing right up here, I feel like really detracts from our main focal point, which is the lovely figure. This is my beautiful sister-in-law. And I also think that this pot right here kind of competes with it as well, but I do like having some garden elements in here so we get a sense of where she is. Something you could do to simplify this composition would be to maybe take out this shape entirely or lighten up these dark streaks on the pots because these things here are really distracting and you could just make them the same color as this lighter color that would be a great way to simplify there's also this dark streak back here you don't have to make it that shape you can just make more of a flat wash that's a darker value I like that it's darker it kind of helps her body stand out a little more you could also choose to darken this whole side of the composition there are all kinds of things you can do ahead of time by simply planning ahead with your photo to just adjust and change crop out and simplify. Well, everyone, I hope that was helpful. These are things that I struggle with on a daily basis with my paintings. The struggle is real. I'm right there with you. There's no such thing as finding a magical composition formula. Sometimes the magic happens and sometimes it doesn't. So just keep logging your brush miles. Just keep painting. It's true you're going to have a lot of failed paintings, but you're also going to have some gems in there that you can be really proud of. So just keep at it. Keep painting. I'll see you in the next video.